I had been looking forward to a week of solitude in my friend's Montana house, a quiet getaway from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. My plans were simple, read some new books, indulge in a bit of wine and good food, and relish some much needed relaxation. My friend, Sarah, had always been an avid collector of dolls, which was evident the moment I stepped into the house. They adorned every room, their lifeless eyes followed me wherever I went. The sheer number of them made me feel uneasy, but I dismissed my unease as mere silliness. The first few nights passed uneventfully as I lost myself in the pages of a thrilling novel. But on the third night, something peculiar occurred. I was nestled in bed, engrossed in my book, when out of the corner of my eye, I saw one of the dolls fall off the shelf I turned to look, puzzled, as there had been no movement or wind to explain its tumble. Reluctantly, I got up and placed the doll back on the shelf. A few minutes later, it tumbled down again. A shiver ran through my body, and I scolded myself for letting a doll unnerve me. I picked it up and set it back where it belonged, but the strange events were far from over. Minutes later, that same doll fell yet again. This time, a sense of unease washed over me. I couldn't shake the feeling that the doll was alive, something that defied logical explanation. I decided to keep the light on as I returned to bed, hoping it would ease my anxiety. As I lay there, trying to push the unsettling thoughts from my mind, I began to grow drowsy. The book lay closed beside me, just as sleep started to pull me under, I heard it, a faint, eerie sound. It was the unmistakable sound of small footsteps, barely audible, yet unmistakable in the silence of the night. Panic took over as I shot upright in bed. The room was dark, but I could make out the eerie shapes of the dolls, all seemingly watching me. I reached for my reading lamp and switched it on, my heart pounded as I scanned the room. Something was horribly wrong. The doll that had fallen multiple times before, the same doll I had put back on the shelf just minutes ago, was now nowhere to be found. I cautiously peered over the side of the bed, scanning the floor for any sign of the doll, but it had disappeared into thin air. My breaths quickened and fear clawed at my throat. I knew that I couldn't stay another moment in this house. Without a second thought, I leaped out of bed, dressed quickly, and left the house in a hurry, my heart still racing. Outside, the Montana night was cold and unforgiving, but it was a far cry from the chilling presence I felt inside. I fumbled for my phone and called Sarah, my voice quivering as I recounted what had happened. To my dismay, Sarah didn't believe me. She thought I was overreacting, and her tone was laced with irritation at my early departure. She insisted that I return, but I couldn't bring myself to go back. I knew what I had experienced was real, and I wasn't about to spend another night in that doll-infested house. As I sat in my car, watching the house recede in my rearview mirror, I couldn't help but wonder where that doll went. I may never fully understand what transpired in those hours of darkness, but one thing was certain. I had encountered something I could not explain, something that would forever haunt me. This story is true, and you must believe me, for the inexplicable terrors that lurk within that house in Montana were very real. I remember that night vividly. It was Christmas Eve and my parents had gone to a holiday party, leaving me alone with a pocket full of money for pizza and a basement full of video games to keep me occupied. At 13 years old, I felt pretty confident about being home alone. Little did I know that this night would change everything. The house was completely dark except for the glow of the television screen in the basement where I was playing a game. The clock on the wall showed 11 p.m when I decided to take a break and raid the kitchen for some cold pizza and a drink. As I tiptoed up the creaky wooden stairs, 
The silence of the house was interrupted by a chilling sound, the shattering of glass from one of the side windows. My heart skipped a beat, and I froze mid-step, pizza forgotten. I strained to listen. My ears pricked up as the intruder spoke in quiet tones just outside the window. They should be out for a while. Let's get in and out quickly. My blood ran cold as I realized what was happening. These people were planning to rob our house, and I was home alone, defenseless. Panic welled up within me, and I knew I had to act fast. I turned on the outdoor lights that illuminated our yard. The sudden flood of light startled the intruders, their silhouettes revealed in the darkness. They muttered curses and obscenities before retreating, their running footsteps fading into the distance. Relief washed over me, but it was quickly replaced by a gnawing fear that this wasn't over. I dashed to the phone and dialed my parents, my voice quivering as I recounted the terrifying ordeal. They rushed home immediately, and together we called the authorities to report the break-in attempt. The police arrived swiftly, and we learned that our house wasn't the only target. There had been a string of burglaries in the area, with the most horrifying incident occurring just last week when a lady had been murdered in her own home after it had been burglarized. The thought terrified me. I had narrowly escaped a fate worse than I could imagine. As the officers took our statements, my parents and I huddled together in the living room, the weight of what could have happened settling upon us. The realization that we were vulnerable in our own home was a bitter pill to swallow. The days that followed were filled with anxiety and sleepless nights. I couldn't shake the fear that those intruders might return or that something worse would happen. I dreaded being home alone and the once familiar comfort of our house now felt tainted. As time passed, the fear began to recede replaced by a deep sense of gratitude and luck. I had been given a second chance, an opportunity to protect our home and myself. I knew that the outcome could have been tragically different. The incident served as a harsh lesson in the fragility of our sense of security. It was a reminder that danger could lurk just beyond the walls of our seemingly safe haven. I learned to be more cautious, to always lock doors and windows, and to trust my instincts when something felt off. Though the memory of that Christmas Eve would forever haunt me, it also made me stronger. I was no longer the naive 13-year-old boy who had once felt invincible. I had faced the darkness, and I had come out the other side, scarred but wiser. As I looked back on that night, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the light that had scared the intruders away. For the police who had arrived in time, and for the chance to share this story with others as a cautionary tale. I knew that not everyone was as lucky as I had been, and I vowed never to take my safety for granted again. I'll tell you about the scariest night of my life, a night that still haunts me to this day. It all began when I was 14 years old, and my best friend Susan was staying over for the weekend while my parents were out of town. We were excited to have the house to ourselves, with no adults to nag us about bedtime or junk food, but we never could have predicted how this night would turn out. Susan and I decided to make the most out of our newfound freedom by watching scary movies and gossiping about cute boys from our class. The dark living room was illuminated only by the glow of the TV as we huddled together on the couch, binging on horror movies. As the night wore on, we couldn't keep our eyes open any longer. The weight of our eyelids became heavy, and we drifted off to sleep right there on the couch, the remote control slipping from Susan's hand. I woke up suddenly to a strange knocking sound. It was coming from the closet next to the living room, my heart began to race as the knocks were joined by eerie scratching noises against the closet door. Panic clawed at my throat, and I glanced over at Susan, who was still asleep beside me. Susan, wake up, I said, gently shaking her shoulder. Do you hear that? 
Susan stirred and slowly opened her eyes, looking just as terrified as I felt. What's happening? What's that noise? We sat there, paralyzed with fear, listening to the creepy sounds emanating from the closet. It was as if something or someone was trapped inside, desperately trying to claw its way out. Summoning every ounce of courage, I called out, Hello? Who's there? For a moment, the knocks and scratches ceased, and an eerie silence settled in the room. Then, the closet door began to creak open slowly, inch by inch. My heart raced in my chest, and Susan clung to me, her knuckles turning white. The door swung open wider, revealing nothing but darkness. Fear gripped us as we watched helpless, while the door continued to open, revealing only pitch darkness within. Our fear finally overcame us, and without thinking, we leaped off the couch, our footsteps pounding on the hardwood floor as we fled out of the house. We needed help, and our only hope was the neighbor down the street. We reached the neighbor's house, gasping for breath and pounding on the door in frantic desperation. Mrs. Johnson, our elderly neighbor, answered, her face a mix of annoyance and concern. Girls, what's going on at this hour? She asked, her voice groggy from being awakened so suddenly. Tears filled my eyes as I cried out. There's something in our house, something in the closet. Please, you have to help us. Mrs. Johnson shared a concerned look with her husband and agreed to come with us to our house. She called our parents, who were still away, and they promised to return as soon as they could. Back in our living room, Mrs. Johnson approached the closet cautiously. She swung the door open, and to our shock, there was nothing inside but clothes and toys. No sinister presence, no eerie sounds, nothing out of the ordinary. Mrs. Johnson turned to us, her skepticism evident. There's nothing here, girls. Maybe it was just your imaginations. But Susan and I knew what we heard and seen. We were convinced that something or someone was hiding in the house. My parents returned home, exhausted from their trip, but they couldn't provide an explanation either. To this day, no one has been able to unravel the mystery of that terrifying night. Susan never spent another night at my house and I can't help but shudder at the memory of the closet door slowly creaking open, revealing only darkness. It's a story I know is true, no matter how unbelievable it may sound.